Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Being the Odds. It is Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024. We are back with our best bets of the day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Zach, and welcome to Being the Odds. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, and notification bell so you never miss a pick. We post these best bet videos every single day. We're going after our first 15,000 subscribers, so I'm really excited to have you all here. Let's go win together today. Let's go make some money. So to recap yesterday's results, yesterday was a really frustrating day. Um, first off, we the Celtics minus nine and a half. Um, you know, the, the rationale for that play was the fact that Indiana just came off an emotional win. They shot almost they shot 67% from the field, the highest ever for, um, field goal percentage in Game 7 history. And we think that there could be a little bit of a letdown. Some of us arrested that whole, all that good stuff. Um, the Celtics looked tight. They did win the game because Jalen Brown made an unbelievable shot. And by the way, the Celtics got up by 10, 11 points in the third quarter. They just blew it. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I said this yesterday. I literally said this on the yesterday of the video or two days ago when, um, the, when Indiana won was that this is going to be a tight series. I just thought game one may not be, but I think this game, I think it's gonna be a really tight series all the way through. Um, hell of a game though to watch I me. Mean, holy shit. Uh, over eight and a half, Cleveland, New York. That was a pretty easy winner. It looked pretty bad for about four innings, and after that, it was pretty easy. Dodgers team total over four and a half. Didn't catch much of that game. Uh, that was a loss. Over 221 and a half, Indiana and Boston. That was a win. First five, minus 0 0.5 for the Twins. That was a win. And then we had some L's in baseball. You guys can see them over my left-hand shoulder here. But here's the thing. I'm not really too worried about the day. I worry about more so the year. And if you guys look at the records, we're having pretty good years across the board and everything. Plus, you have an NFL and college football on top of that. We're doing pretty well over here when it comes to money. And we have five plays I'm going to give you guys here today on YouTube. Um, we have one NBA, one NHL, three MLB. Let's jump into it now. I'm going to start with our first plays with the under 206 and a half in Dallas and Minnesota. Uh, first things first, I, I like this is all about, you know, styles make fights. And the styles for both of these teams, we should be getting an under game here for sure. First off, Dallas, because of how ball dominant Luka and Kyrie are, they're a very, they're they're very ISO. Their their offense is very much as ISO ball, um, with the occasional three pointer by PJ Washington or Derek Lively getting some put back dunks. Um, and if they're playing a lot of ISO ball, I said this last series, like every fucking game, I'm gonna say it again, is that if there's a lot of ISO ball, we're gonna get a lot of shots in the late shot clock, which means we're gonna have less possessions, which will be less scoring. It will be a fast paced game, but it's just I think it will be an efficient game, but. It's just going to take longer for people to score. Minnesota has random cold spells as well, where they're just like they they just they just don't put it together offensively, and then they have then they come out later and figure it out. But you know, there's random cold spells. I think this sells an under game. Both the Minnesota is elite defensively. I mean, elite. They've got the size, the strength, the speed, everything. Um, and Dallas is very underrated defensively, especially as Luke and Kyrie are trying on defense, and they're actually pretty good defenders. And when you look at the matchups here, I think they match up really well with each other defensively. So for me, I feel like this is a pretty obvious underplay. So we'll go with the under 206 and a half, Dallas and Minnesota. Next, we'll go with the Guardians. Money line, minus 126 versus the Mets. Um, I like McKenzie over Quintana big time here. Quintana's been horrible this entire year for the Mets. Uh, it's a five something, a high five ERA. McKenzie's mid threes. Huge difference there, obviously. I like the Cleveland bullpen substantially better than I liked um, New York's Cleveland's number one. Well, New York is number four, but the fact is that Cleveland showed yesterday they can hit on this team, um, especially in the bullpen. Um, on top of that, when you look at this Cleveland team, I like their lineup better. Um, the Mets lineup does cost more money uh, than Cleveland's does, but Cleveland's is better. Plus, they're playing at home, and they have better starting pitching and better bullpen. To me, this is a pretty obvious play. I'm rolling with the Guardians here, money line minus 126 versus the Mets. Next, we'll go the Dodgers, minus one and a half versus the Diamondbacks. I'll take Glass over Nelson all day long. Um, Glass now has been one of the best pitchers in the entire league this year. Early Cy Young watch for him. Um, on top of that, uh, Nelson has has continued how bad he was basically in the second half of last year's season into this year. He has been fucking terrible. Plus, the bullpen for the Dodgers is one of the best in the league after starting horribly. Stat-wise, they're third best in the league, and that was after this year. The first three weeks of the year, they were one of the worst bullpens in the league. So that gives you an idea of how well they're playing. I don't know what will. They're playing unbelievably well. On top of that, when you look at this Dodgers team, the lineup is, I think, a little bit better than the Diamondbacks. Plus, they got smoked by the Diamondbacks yesterday, which means I think they're going to bounce back really well today. Um, and they have the better pitching. I roll the Dodgers here to win by two or more. I love the Dodgers here by over two or more versus the D-backs. Next, we'll go the Brewers. Minus 1.5 is a plus 118 odds, which is nice for the odds-wise anyway. I thought about doing the money line, but it was a little too juiced at minus 144. But first off, I think the biggest thing here for the Brewers anyway is they get to play in Miami. And no one is going to show up for this game like 
no one's going to care at all in Miami. And I think when you're in Miami, very similar to Oakland, very similar to the White Sox, and you show up to a stadium that has that can seat 35,000 and 1,500 people show up, I don't really know how you deal with that. I, I just really don't know how you deal with that. If you're a batter and you look up and you're looking around your home stadium, it is completely empty. I think that demoralizes you more than anything possible. Same thing with anyone who's coming in from the bullpen. Same thing for a starting pitcher for that home team, whether it's the White Sox, the Marlins, the A's, that sort of thing. And when you look at the Brewers on the other side of things, if you are a if you're an away team and you look around and there's no one in that ballpark, I think it gives you a lot of confidence personally. Not because they're saying, oh, the Brewers are so good, we can't win. They're like, dude, this team is so shitty, we don't even want to show up. And that is such a big advantage, in my opinion, for the Brewers here today. On top, and then if you look at the tangible advantages the Brewers have, first off, Peralta's better than Lazardo. Lazardo played well last year. He's been bad this year. He is not playing well. Well, Freddie Peralta's gotten better and better and better and better. Uh, Miami has one of the worst bullpens in the league. I think they're like eighth worst or something like that. Ninth, yeah, they're one, two, three, four, five, seventh worst in the MLB this year. While the Brewers are 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 above average, they're they're a top ten bullpen in the league. They're not amazing, but they're not bad at, at all. Um, they're about a run and a half better than Miami is on the bullpen. Plus, the lineup for the Brewers is substantially better, not because the Brewers lineup's even like that explosive, but because Miami does not have players. I mean, they've traded away all their good guys. A lot of their guys are hurt. And they traded away Luis Ares, which is their best player anyway. They've already basically given up on the season already, while the Brewers obviously have not. So I'm rolling the Brewers here to win by two or more in Miami. Um, I think that the, getting the odds of plus 118 here is a blessing. So this is right. If this were in Milwaukee, the, the, the line would be so much worse. It'd be like minus probably 125, minus 130 for a minus one and a half game. So I'm rolling the Brewers here minus one and a half versus the Marlins. And then lastly, we're going with the Panthers. Money line minus 110 versus the Rangers. Uh, for me, in my money, I'm going to take the Panthers all day long over the Rangers because here's the deal. The Rangers got outplayed in every single, in, in, in every game but game one by the Hurricanes, and they still won in six because of, first off, early in the series, Shesterkin carried them. In games two and three, Shesterkin carried them, and that was the only reason they didn't, they won those games because Hurricanes had so many A1 chances, so many opportunities uh, to beat the Rangers and the Rangers, and Shesterkin just shut the door. Like, he just shut the door. They have, like, and the, the Hurt and the Panthers are way better than the Hurricanes. They're better defensively. They have a better goalie. Uh, they're, they're deeper offensively. And the last three games of that series, games four, five, and six, Shesterkin was, so, was sort of solved. Like, they were able to score three, four goals a game um, in some cases. And for me, I think the Panthers are going to be able to exploit a, I think, very overrated Rangers team. Gr great goalie. Great goalie. But an overrated Rangers team. And... The Panthers have been one of the best teams this entire year, and they're a road team. And plus, I want to give them a minus one time. That's saying something. That's that's what Vegas is telling you that the that they think the Panthers are better than the Rangers, and I and I think the same thing. So I'm rolling the Panthers here moneyline minus one ten versus the Rangers. But just so you guys know, we do have four members only plays today. Uh, we'll have one in the NBA, one in the NHL, two in the MLB. You can get the zdmbestcom slash picks website is linked in the comments below. But guys, go lock in those picks. Let's go win together today. Let's go make some money. I'll see you all tomorrow. Make sure you all check out our videos.